Hey YouTube, welcome to episode 18 of the Frontend Loader Build. This is the final episode in the series, so I haven't done everything that I want to do yet. I plan to make some accessories for the Frontend Loader, like a pair of forks, maybe a few other things. And I haven't made a stand yet to assist in taking the loader on and off tractor, but I'll cover them in a later video. In this video I want to tidy up some loose ends and put the tractor through its paces to see what it will do. And then I'll have a little bit of a discussion about the build and things that I might have done differently had this been the second one I made instead of the first. So let's have a look at it. Here is a bucket. I painted it. I decided to paint the bucket black. It will at least match the cylinders or the rams. Black zinc I used. Wanted to protect it against rust as much as I can. I realise most of the paint's going to get scraped off as soon as I start using it, but I figure that the bits that get scraped regularly will not gather rust because the rust will get scraped off as well. And the bits that do retain the paint because they're not scraped off, it'll do some good for them. And I figure mostly the back of the bucket and the sides and top, I guess. The bottom of the bucket is largely going to get scraped off, I'd expect. I've hung it up there on wires off the front end loader because that was just a convenient way to get it up off the ground so I could paint it all at once. Worked well. And <laughs> the first real use of the front end loader was to get its own bucket painted. Well, this is the penultimate job to do on this build. I've lowered it all down to the ground and give this a good wriggle to make sure there's no pressure build up. Everything's just sitting there. I'm going to go through and take each of these pins out and put a little bit of grease on it and put it back. The reason I didn't do that before when I originally put it together was that if I had to take it apart and do any work on it, I didn't want grease everywhere. So I've got to do that now and I'll just take a minute to show you this. This is a tin of grease in the old man's garage. He has several of them there. If you don't know from looking at the tin that this is in, this grease is nearly as old as I am. It's one of the old style ones. It has a tin washer sort of thingy in there with a hole in the centre. And the idea was you put your grease gun over that and poked it down and the grease squirted up out of the middle to fill your gun. Anyhow, the grease looks as good as new so that's what I'm going to use to grease this up with. Now there's only a couple that I want to show you in particular and I'll just do them first and then I'll go and do the rest of it off camera. This one down here is one of them. Okay, and the reason I wanted to show you that is the pipe that I used for this is a larger diameter than this hole. So I want to poke some grease through so that it sits in the pipe and that'll give it a bit that'll work its way out as time goes by. Maybe won't have to grease these ones quite as often. I'll just push this down so that some of the grease come up. And just out of interest, that's the way it was loaded up into the gun, pushing out in a big sort of sausage like that. I need to give these a fairly good grease. This is really old metal that I used for this and there is a little bit of rust pitting in it. Given that this is a yard tractor, I don't expect you to do any really heavy work like you would on the construction site. I think this will be just fine, but if you're going to be using it for anything heavy, I'd certainly make sure the pins are a bit more polished than these ones are. Well, that moved a lot more than I expected it to. I'm going to have to start this up, try and get this in, I think. difficult than I thought it would be. I'll do the rest off camera, you got the idea for that one. Apart from those ones that are done with the pipe, the rest are just greasing the pins and putting them through. If it gives me any more trouble like that, I'll take the bucket off, lift it up in the air and just do it up in the air where I can move things around easily. 
Well, unfortunately, I've lost audio during this segment, but what I was trying to explain was that I don't expect to need to use this a lot, and I think that just raising the pins once a year would be enough to keep them in good order. But if it turns out to be different, I could put some grease nipples in the tubes that the pins go through where that's appropriate. And where it's not appropriate, I can drill down the axis of the pin and then drill a couple of cross holes in where the grease needs to come out and then grease them that way. Time will tell, I'll give it a go as is and just see how that works out. And if it doesn't, I'll add some grease nipples to make the maintenance a bit easier. If you think you need grease nipples, I'd recommend building them in right from the word go. We can't let a thing like a little bit of rain hold up the testing of the front end loader. Okay, well, this is my very first time at doing this, but I haven't looked at YouTube. So low range, four wheel drive, and get the bucket down the start of the bottom. Deal bottom. Funny. You know what part of the going on there? Got my down to high range for this. Taking too long to get there. One thing they do say on eBay on uh, YouTube is not to lift them too high because it overbalances the Okay, well there you go. Bucket's been dirty. Part of the bit of soil around. I haven't moved a great deal of soil. It's down there by the shed. Just zoom in and have a look. Just that dirt there, a bit behind the tank. Not a great deal, but I'm going to put a little bit more air in the front tyres before I go any further. Well, it's certainly a bit harder to steer with the weight of the dirt in the bucket and I think the little bit of air in the front tyres wouldn't go astray. This is just a little demo of the quick attach feature of the bucket. 
I've trialed it several times, but each time I've put it on north by hand. This is the first time I've ever driven up to it and allowed the tractor to pick it up. As you can see, it works exceedingly well. And as with most other things in this project, I'm very happy with the way it came out. One of the pins still needs to be eased a little bit. I think there's a little bit of paint got down in the hull. But other than that, it goes on and off quite smoothly. Now's the part of the job that we talk about things that I could have done better. I designed it purposely so that this would go high enough here to go over the side of my trailer and I'm six foot two so you can see it'll nicely clear the side of the trailer and this will curve down to drop things into it. But every design's a compromise and with this I found that having it go so high makes the tractor very unstable when it's got a full bucket and you lift that high. I certainly wouldn't want to do it on anything but level ground because if it's got the slightest bit of slope on it you can feel the tractor almost wanting to tip when you move the centre of gravity of the tractor up so high. Now the other thing is this could be redesigned a little bit because this hits just here. So I could have come out with more of a V on that because this ram isn't quite extending, it's got maybe that much more that it could extend. It doesn't need to go down any further, so what should happen is a bit more V on this and a little bit shorter on this, which would allow the bucket to tip back up further, which it's okay as it is, but it wouldn't hurt to tip back up a little bit further when it's down close to the ground. Now as for how I went about constructing it, as you saw I built the arms separately and I just did them by measurement so if I was to do them again I'd put together a proper jig even if it was only clamped together so that I got both arms exactly the same. I think I got them really close, there's only like a millimetre difference between them but it would help if I had them exactly the same and the other thing was I built the keel and these keel posts first and then I put the arms on it. Now I think and if you get the camera around here, you can see that this is up tight here. We've got a little bit of a gap over on this side of it. You can see that gap just there? Yep, that's it. And that's because the way I built it, it was really hard. Like, there's only a millimetre and a half in that. There's not much in it. I did pretty well given the way I built it. But I think what I'd do next time is I would make the keel, but I wouldn't put the keel posts on. I'd build the arms separately, get them all welded together, get them all nice and square. Then I would pin the arms to these towers here, attach them to the posts, and then, once I had everything put together that way, I would weld the posts on in place. I think that would be a better idea. Like, there's nothing wrong with it, this works fine, and I'm quite happy with it, but I think it would just be slightly better done the other way. And I could be entirely wrong, so if you don't agree with me, don't try to do it. <laughs> the other thing, initially, I had the idea of using stainless steel tube for these hydraulic lines and running them the same way they do on the professionally built tractors. But the job was dragging on and that would have added at least another week or two to the process of building it, so I decided to opt for the rubber lines. I did an okay job with them. I could have done better, I think, but they're okay. They don't look too untidy. I'm sure someone could do a better job at laying them out. First time I've had to lay out anything like this, so I don't think I did too badly with it. Had I not been rushing to try and get this finished, I think I would have liked to have done the stainless steel tubing for the pressure lines. That would have been really nice and neat. I could have kept them right up close against the inside of this arm, run them across there and just had the rubber just on the last little bit of them. Yeah, aesthetics, but it all counts. This is a tad long. I've got to ease that off a little bit because the ring on the pin won't slide all the way over it. I've got to chop a little bit more off that. I can do that any time. The other thing is that once you get the bucket a bit full and you're starting to lift it, it's really light in the back. So you could put wheel weights on it, which I probably should do. You could fill the tyres half full of water, which a lot of people do do. For the moment, I just put the carry all on and as necessary, throw some ballast on that to give it a little bit of extra weight in the back. That seems to help a lot. And keeping the carry all down a little bit low to the ground helps, keeps the centre of gravity a bit lower and makes it a bit more stable. 
So, and as you can see, the bucket does lift up enough to hold things in. But if we made this arm here a little bit shorter, we get a little bit more angle on it. We've got plenty of angle coming down. Had this piece cut a little bit sharper radius or even in a V, we'd be able to go a little bit further forward on these ramps as well. If I was doing it again, I'd just change the design of this just a little bit. I made the towers so that they come off. I've just got to take that pin out and the tower comes off. But I haven't made the stands yet. I need some stands to fold down here. It'll allow me to just lift that tower off nice and easy with the hydraulics. I've got the quick attach fittings on the hydraulics to disconnect it. I just need to make the stand. I'll do that at a later date because I don't need to take it off for a little while. So I'll do another video once I get that done and just demonstrate how the stand's made and how it comes on and off the tractor. When I designed it to have a certain height, because I wanted a tip height over the side of the trailer, that necessitated having these arms coming up further out here. If you don't need that tip height, what you could do is take these arms and come in a lot closer to the tractor. That would reduce the height that you can lift the bucket to, but it would also, I think, make it a lot more stable. And it would also mean you need less ballast at the back because this sticks out so far at the front, I need more ballast at the back to balance it. Those things to bear in mind, the plans are downloadable for free off my website. If you do decide to build one, you do so at your own risk. Just bear in mind the things I said I would have done differently. Have fun, be careful, stay safe. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch these videos. I do hope you've enjoyed them. The main purpose of this series was to try and demonstrate how to build a front end loader, give you an idea of how to use the plans that I've put up on my website, and give you an idea of how much work's involved in it. Now that the build's finished and I've tested it and it seems to work okay for me, I've put the plans up on my website. You can download them for free. As always, use them at your own risk. Welding's dangerous, using the power tools is dangerous, and using a tractor is dangerous. So assess your risk and act appropriately. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe for more. Until next time.